Concussions are a big topic in sports today, right now, especially contact sports. It's very, it's become a sensitive topic, it's become a hot button topic, it's become a high priority topic, especially now uh, with the contact sports, especially NFL, trying to reduce the number of injuries and concussion is a number one priority injury that they're trying to eliminate from the game. It's a traumatic brain injury that can be caused by a blow to the head or body and a fall or some type of impact. The symptoms include dizziness, difficulty concentrating, and confusion, as well as headache, irritability, nausea, light sensitivity or sensitivity to light, forgetfulness, and insomnia. Concussions also tend to involve vertigo or brain fog or blurry vision or difficulty finding words. <laughs> Funny, <laughs> I have these and I've never had a concussion that I know of. Just a little joke there, I want to uh, stop right now to thank the two of you, my two consistent viewers for uh, listening, so I thought I'd throw in a joke right there. Uh, but anyway, yeah, concussion is a very, very hot button topic right now, and I want to look at some new developments in concussion recovery. Uh, they involve a concussion recovery plan and some, like, okay, it's a mix of natural remedies and new approaches into healing from concussions. There seems to be new evidence that there's effective treatments to speed up recovery and they include like, you know, moderate exercise, maybe some cooling of the head and neck after you've had a concussion. I've seen recent uh, suggestions are aromatherapy. I'll go delve into this in more detail. It used to be we kind of brushed off uh, back in the day uh, concussion is trying to show toughness but now it's taken with more seriousness and it's become a major public health challenge I even heard of uh, concussions now coming up as a hot button topic in other sports like uh, maybe uh, soccer th or the other football as some may say and even in volleyball or uh, I've even seen it brought up once in ultimate frisbee maybe once but uh, I think that it should have been looked at a long time ago. I, I, it, it probably should have, well, maybe it wasn't because they thought that maybe if you focus on it, it'll be a threat to certain people's pockets, which is a whole other topic. But it comes to the topic of CTE, which is definitely tied to uh, concussion. It's like a CTE disease. It's uh, something that a lot of NFL players have suffered from. Even some seem to have gone off on the deep end, killed themselves, or lost their minds. And it seemed to have been swept under the rug for a while. But now, uh, with the new awareness of concussions, it's taken more seriously. So nowadays, uh, people want to take more precautions. So you see more people being escorted off of their field of play to have an assessment to make sure that they're in good neurological condition. They also have, like, tests they take and a certain protocol they have if they don't feel confident that that person's in good condition then they sit them out of competition for a designated period of time they've also made progress with prevention uh, they've gone as far as to change how they referee the rules in little league to have kids grow up uh, adhering to the new rules of concussion or avoiding concussions basically this has a lot to do prevent with prevention so i want to take it some take a look at some new developments in concussion treatments and a lot of these do involve a bit more uh natural uh looks at things i've never really heard of any uh medication that helps with concussion i know there's probably information out there uh i maybe some people take certain uh, calming medications I don't know but I've just heard of you know them kind of being treated you know with different types of uh, temperature treatments or maybe just relaxing uh, less light uh, but these take a look at uh, these new developments have a look at some alternative therapies as well as some uh, even in-house in hospital therapies or in treatment center therapies the main challenges with concussions is they're pretty hard to predict. Uh, they're not hard to diagnose, but it's hard to pre predict or tell when somebody's going to suffer from a concussion because two human beings can get hit by the same force and one suffers a concussion and one may not have any visible uh, symptoms of concussion. Even uh, a lot of symptoms or results can be 
psychological as well as mental and physical. So I want to look into some treatments as far as improving concussion that help speed up recovery. Uh, one is supplements. Unfortunately, supplements are not cheap, but it's available for treatment for those who can afford it, unfortunately. And that is also another topic that I might look into. I don't know. I mean, I would think that supplements could be interchangeable with eating the right foods. But basically, they involve uh, vitamin C, D, omega-3 fatty acids, vitamin E, uh, curcumin, turmeric, basically eat some turmeric, and melatonin and creatine. Uh, these are just things that, again, are generic uh, supplements over the counter. They don't, they're not proven to have any significant, uh, I want to say cures for concussions, but they do provide the right nutritional value to help you recover faster from a concussion. Now, there is a clinical trial or two separate clinical trials. There is one uh, Canadian study where it shows the effect of omega-3 vitamin D plus creatine on persistent post-concussion symptoms. And there's a U.S. study on melatonin in an acute pediatric concussion. So I think the U.S. study focuses on uh, concussions in children. And then the Canadian study focuses just on the omega-3 vitamin D plus creatine as it relates to persistent post-concussion symptoms. These symptoms involve like concentration issues, irritability, sleep deprivation, and basically symptoms like that where the person is basically irritable, it's hard for them to sleep, it's hard for them to concentrate. They're looking at the results of these extra vitamins, omega-3, which is found in fish, and creatine to see if the three combined, uh, taken consistently, can help the patient overcome these symptoms. Another solution to overcoming concussion is exercise. Moderate exercise, I say, could speed concussion recovery. I assume most athletes do this anyway. I'm sure some of them will probably go beyond, above and beyond exercise, but you probably have to tell them to slow down some. And the key word is moderate, 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 moderate. Uh, especially, you know, if anything involves, you know, moving your head too much, I guess. Uh, basically, you have moderate exercise and you target the exercise after concussion and make a positive difference. And basically, basically like aerobic exercise to help increase blood flow to the brain, which helps you get more oxygen, which helps you, you produce more brain-derived neuropathic uh, stimulation. I also read here that it stimulates neuron growth and enhances neuroplasticity. I'm not a neurologist. So I'm, not, I'm just going by what they've written in sites like psychology today which is like one of the sources i use as far as like brain development and brain uh injuries and things like that another treatment they call thermal treatment but it usually involves cooling basically cooling in the neck and head area because uh, i know increasing temperature kind of inflames things but on a side note I have noticed that increasing temperature when it comes to ankle uh, sprains helps. It used to help me back when I played sports. I don't know. It was like a home remedy. It worked for me. Like the deep heating creams as well as like heating with a uh, hot towel. But that's a whole, again, that's ankle sprain. It's not a concussion. Again, I'm not a doctor, but this uh, thermal treatment listed in Psychology Today, it uh, says that a study is published in the Journal of Neurotrauma looked at the impact of immediate head and neck cooling. For concussed ice hockey players okay okay i can see i can see that and they said it's looked promising as far as helping ice hockey players repair or recover from concussions basically with the cooling they use a head cooling cap to help cool the head and the neck and the cooling cap measured uh it the impact the cooling cap they measured the impact of the concussion and they used a the cooling cap to see how fast the, the athlete recovered and the results of that were those athletes that use the cooling cap, they returned to play I went four days faster than those who had the basic standard uh, concussion care, which is a four day difference. I think they recovered in nine days versus 13 days with the standard care. The cooling pack is a bit more technologically nuanced than just a regular ice pack. It's basically a high-powered portable cooling system using circulating coolant 
controlled and maintained at zero degrees Celsius. The coolant flows through a silicone based head cap and has insulating neoprene cover. They also recommend physical therapy, massage, and uh, some, I guess, massage, manual therapy. Therapy where you're basically, you know, having your neck rub, maybe your neck relax, and things like that. To address the dizziness and balance issues, they suggest vision therapy, also known as neurooptometric rehabilitation. I also want to take a look at some videos. One is from a neurologist who goes into detail about what type of food or nutrition to intake while you're trying to recover from a concussion. Basically, he says it helps you recover from a concussion faster. I want to take a look at his uh, assessment. And then after that, we'll take a look at someone who discusses Tua Tagovailoa and his concussion issue. That is something I was thinking about. Uh, he's had concussions before. He's had several injuries. I thought I'll, I'll go into that later after that video. I mean, during that video, I'll discuss my opinion on Tua's concussion and how he should go and look at that because that can be controversial. I have I have an extended opinion about that. I don't think it's all on him. Uh, it is, but as far as how it started, I don't think it's all on him. But we'll take a look at that uh, when that video comes up. Right now, we'll look at the neurologist in his uh, his advice in regards to nutrition. Claim when we have a head injury. Uh, if you look at the hormone videos uh, that we've posted, uh, concussion and hormone videos, you'll, you'll hear about the gut and why that is. But basically the immune system in the gut is overreactive. So we want to Im remove immune stimulating foods. Okay, processed foods are, are a big problem generally. So you want, you want whole foods. If you need to meal prep, Spend a day where you meal prep things. Meal prep on a Sunday and, and prep some good food so you're not jumping to those processed, you know, sh sugar laden foods because those are going to worsen inflammation. I always thought it was hard uh, to meal prep sometimes. I get in a zone, I get in a real zone where I'm really meal prepping, you know, designated days of the week. And then some days you just fall off because, you know, something happens, you got to go get your car maintained at the mechanics or you might be have to visit a friend or just something throws you off sometimes during the week every once in a while or maybe often so i find that can be a challenge especially now with <laughs> the grocery prices shooting up uh, it's good for those of you who have gardens i know a few people that do i hope the two of you that are listening to me <laughs> have gardens maybe you do maybe you don't or you can start one uh, but i think that uh, it's it can be a challenge it should be easy we think it's easy but depending on where you live in your circumstances it can be a challenge okay we all I also find and this isn't in everybody but I find a lot of problems with gluten containing proteins so wheat barley oats rye okay rice and quinoa tend to be better tolerated I also find big problems with beans and legumes okay beans uh, anything containing a lot of lectins because what they'll do is overstimulate the immune system in the gut these are things, so of course our kidney beans, uh, green beans, black beans, brown beans. Um, we'll also find problems with peanuts and other lentils. Okay, so those you want to watch for. Now, I actually like lentils, but again, I'm not suffering from concussion. Uh, again, that was a list of foods you shouldn't eat. Let's go see what he says you should look into. I think he already mentioned sugar, especially that's a problem. I think he's going to go into detail about that. That's the... Uh, about how sugar helps grow fungus grow and that could uh, hinder your recovery time. I think you already mentioned that. Let me check. Let me speed up here. Elevated inflammation. And the other thing I'll strongly caution everybody against is eating things that are high in sugar. Okay. Now, of course, we know, you know, a lot of sugar is not, not good for us. For someone with concussion, it, it has to be very limited. Um, not too limited because you don't want to have your energy go too low but you do want to limit it because the biggest problem is fungal overgrowth okay now this is something very few people are talking about um, mold spores fungal spores they're absolutely everywhere and they're what we call opportunistic okay uh, opportunistic essentially means fungal problems will only overgrow if they have the opportunity to 
okay if the conditions exist that they can grow kind of like a weed in a garden if the weed can grow because it has what it needs and and nothing stopping it it will grow okay and and fungi fungi is the, are the exact same thing so if you think about a vegetable when a vegetable is growing on a plant it doesn't have mold on it right if it does very little amount when you pull that vegetable off of its living entity its living plant right or the fruit fruit is the same way now all of a sudden you keep it for too long what happens it gets moldy it no longer has the defense mechanisms to be able to fight off the fungal overgrowth okay now the very same thing happens in humans when our immune system's functioning well our hormone system's functioning well right we don't develop any fungal overgrowth problems because we can keep it at bay as soon as we get head injuries our immune system shifts and the smart division that can keep that under control drops and sometimes the flamethrower or the dumb division of the immune system called the innate goes too high okay and when this happens fungal overgrowth can happen and it can happen within the body it can happen within the central nervous system I never knew this. This is interesting. Uh, you know, this is really interesting. Uh, it's, uh, I didn't know you can get fungal overgrowth when you have a concussion. Now that I think about it, I did. Uh, I don't know if I had a concussion. I remember falling. I was doing pull-ups and I did fall and hit my head. But I broke the fall before I hit my head. So I don't know if the hit was that hard. But I just thought it was interesting. I hope I didn't have any fungal fungal overgrowth anywhere who knows but it's just something that crossed my mind spores can circulate around or you can get it happening in the gut and you'll oftentimes see actually women with a lot of head injuries usually have problems with yeast vaginosis where they'll, well, they'll get yeast infections and that's another thing that i didn't know about and i think that's important to know uh when you have head injuries right to check uh, for fungal issues or women check for yeast or fungal issues as well this is really important information that uh is really not common publicly known at least from to my knowledge but I'm, I'm i'm glad i ran into this and i'm glad i'm pretty much kind of documenting this on video uh i think he goes further into just more detail about your gut health as it relates to concussion uh but I, to save time uh, I want to also look at the other video regarding uh, Tua Tagovailoa's injury. This is like his second or third concussion. I think that, I mean, anyway, we'll look at the video and I'll, I'll pretty much go into detail about what I, my opinion in regards to him. We know who won. But this is the team we're talking about. Did Tua suffer another concussion in the game, but failed to say anything? Or did he suffer the concussion, but didn't have symptoms until today when he finally notified medical staff? That's a fair question, I think. Uh, let's say for example let's say he just didn't mention it and he just really he made it had the symptoms but he didn't mention it I, I guess that's again his desire to play kicking in but I don't think it's safe I did say I would express my opinion on that he even was uh, the doctor who they made the movie concussion about who discovered CTE Dr. O'Malley even tweeted that Tua should retire I mean he's very talented uh, I think he's a really good player but he's gone through lots and lots of injuries he had the hip surgery when he played for alabama which i think they put him back on the team on the in the game too soon i think a lot of especially in college and pros pros okay it's corrupt as it is uh I'm, I'm not gonna address pros but it started for him i think it started in ncaa uh play and i think there they should be more responsible and they're not with those kids they put him back on the field too fast, I think. They did the same thing with RG3, but they did that when he was playing for the Redskins. I think that ended his career, to me. I think these some of these coaches or whoever, team managers, uh, team managers, uh, owners with the N NFL and maybe the coaches with the NCAA, they push players to get back on the field after injury too soon. I think they don't give them time enough to heal, and it ruins their careers. 
I think it's going to ruin Tua's career, and I also think it ruined RG3's career, regardless of what you think about him. But this is just my assessment of that situation. Let's uh, go further into this concussion issue with Tua. That's the ultimate question. But here's what we know. Actually, let me fast forward this intro and just get into the meat of the issue. We are going to scroll back and remember exactly what happened in week three when he got hit by Matt Milano, suffered what appeared to be a concussion, but only to rule out a back injury because he returned. Then less than a week later, he suffered another injury and he looked like this, which is super scary. What's going on here? What happened? He returned a couple weeks later and has been okay, but never really as good as he was early on that season. Now, Tua was lighting things up. He made an incredible pass to Waddle, who just torched the entire team. Then he threw a bomb to Tyreek. And never looked the same after that. There was one point in the fourth quarter. And I was watching the game. I'm like who is he throwing to? Like he was literally throwing at defenders. And I'm like. Here's the problem I have with this situation. The spotters are supposed to spot head injuries. They're not perfect. Every player cannot be evaluated every time he gets tackled. It's just... Uh, before I get into that, to be fair, we've seen a lot of quarterbacks throw at defenders, and they seem to be pretty cognitive or pretty healthy. Well, at least for all we know. Then again, you never know. Maybe they were also suffering from light concussions, but sometimes they've seen totally healthy, and they've thrown to defenders directly. That could be another topic in regards to fixing a game. I mean, I'm going too far with that, but anyway, just, just something I thought I'd point out unrealistic there are traditionally at least four team docs two non-surgical two orthopedic surgeons they'll also have an independent neural trauma consultant they'll all okay we the of course teams have their doctors but we all know there are team doctors who are basically there for the team's interests you know they may say they're for, there for the players interests and maybe there are probably are doctors that are there for the players interest but to be realistic, I think a lot of doctors are there for the team's interest. That's who they're getting paid by. That's my opinion. It doesn't always have to be the case, but I probably think it's more the case than not. But that could have been a concussion. Pull that player and evaluate him. Whatever the situation was, he did not get looked at, as far as we know, the entire game. Did he go at halftime? Maybe, but we do not know that. As far as I can tell... Tua did not get evaluated for a head injury in this game. He knows the protocol. He knows the symptoms of a concussion. He's had at least one this year. He knows that if he says something, there is a very good chance he's done for the game. But did he do a disservice by not saying anything? Here's the problem I have with this. Some of the symptoms of a concussion are subjective. Do you have a headache? I can't tell you that. Do you have blurry vision? I can't tell you that. I can test you, but I don't know if you're experiencing that if you don't tell me, unless it's blatantly obvious. He wasn't walking around aimlessly like he was earlier in the season after that hit that was obvious the tricky part is when did these symptoms start i think yeah that is the tricky part but let's say i think at this point we know he's had a concussion and you know whether he said anything or not uh you know that's he has his reasons you know i try to put myself in people's shoes on both sides right um you know, 
if you do have a concussion, then may, you're not in your right mind. And even if you may be in your right mind, you're still like thinking, you know, you want to play. You don't want to, you know, be seen as weak or you don't want to be seen as being forced to just quit your career. So those things are going through someone's head. So imagine you're dealing with that. Plus, you are dealing with a real concussion. So in a way, you may not be in your right frame of mind in regards to making decisions because you're um, in a way under duress. It's like a, a type of uh, slow duress considering, you know, it continues after the game because you're worrying about, you know, keeping your career. Uh, I don't know. Um, I personally do think he should probably think, look at other career options. He's had too many injuries uh, for my liking. I think for his longevity in life, uh, the game is just a game. Um, he's got family to think about. You don't want to hurt your family. You don't want to shorten your lifespan. So this is just my opinion. It doesn't mean anything, you know, in the greater scheme of thing, things. It's all up to him. That's just what I think. Uh, there's nothing much I can say about that. But uh, let me know what you think. Feel free to leave a comment. Please like and subscribe. And thank you for taking time to listen. I really appreciate you two guys out there who are listening to me consistently. Thank you so much.